So I just misspelled 14 in French. Q U A T O R Z E. Catos. Catos with the. Okay. Catos. Catos. So every day when I finish, it gives me lingo. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. I've spoken with one of my viewers, her name is Didi. She told me her struggle of living in Germany as an international student. Part of the struggle was language barrier. You may know my postdoc was in France and I have lived here now for two years. I have come a long way to realize how a foreigner can learn a language when you are living and studying in Europe. So today I'd like to share a little bit more tips about how I come to learn French. Now my French level is maybe about a five-year-old child. I can live in France without speaking English for all the day-to-day -day problems. Learning a language is not as hard as you think because sometimes my favorite sentence is Je voudrais ça s'il vous plaît because you can replace ça as any noun and if you are at the restaurant, you can just point at what you wanted to order. I know it's bad, but it works functionally. Est-ce que vous connaissez is something I use a lot. Est-ce que vous avez is also something I've used a lot, which is the polite way to ask, do you know? You can ask anything. Even you don't know how to write a question, you can say, est-ce que vous avez Louvre Museum? Louvre Museum. And when you don't know the word, my cheats, for French is I substitute the noun in English. I need some help. My first line of French is Cassant Super Play. The moment I get to the first 12 months of training, my comfort level of living in this foreign country was exponentially better because I can now take a call with my landlord. I can take a call with a French person and slowly explain myself, try enough so that the French people will be convinced that it's better I speak in English with you than you speak in French. You can speak in English, we. Oui. <laughs> and they appreciate the fact that I have tried. Thank you, French people. Je suis... Vincent Chan habite à Il y a un problème dans ma salle de bain. Oui, oui. Le interrupteur de eau a été cassé. Merci. Et je dois travailler demain. Je vous remercie. Au revoir. So I may be acting right now, but that was my very first French phone call. I was really intimidated, but I used Google. Somehow the landlord understand and she sent someone the next day. But the point of today's video is not to teach you how much French Vera know, but it's to just walk you through the basic structure you can get in place when you are living in a foreign country for your PhD or postdoc. So let's get started. We all know about this app called Duolingo on the phone. So in this video, I hope to walk you through how I make the best use of Duolingo. No, this video is not sponsored by Duolingo. I just have been using it for the last two years without any breaks. So I really have learned a thing or two about Duolingo and I want to share that so that you can use the app more effectively. Now the first tip will be download the app before you arrive, have a list of vocabulary already and every day you can develop your muscle memory about all these new words. Café, fromage, tea, lait, café. I, did I say café two times? Even before you go to that new country, spend maybe 15 to 10 minutes every day. Set a goal for yourself. Personally, I do two exercises on Duolingo since 700 days ago and I have never missed a day of practicing French. I really should have started 
four months earlier because when I first come to France, I realized people are chatting every day in French. My institution is an international institution. And so because it's their mother tongue, a lot of time when they are relaxed, they just want to speak without using English. And I totally understand and I don't take it personal. But in the beginning, I do feel a little too isolated because I don't even understand how the sentence structure is and even the basic word of French. So if I really could have told my younger self before I come to France is install Duolingo app on your phone and make it a practice for at least a few months before you arrive in the country. By the time you go grocery shopping, you can start identifying this is home milk. This is fermented milk. Real story, I bought fermented milk because I didn't know fermente means yogurt. My coffee was a little funny that week. The second tips about Duolingo is we are all competitive as PhD and we might want to bite off more than we can chew. And to me, I'm very mindful about how much of a big goal I'm setting for myself. Like for this channel, I set a goal of posting once a week and I told myself if I get busy, I'm allowed to post a shorter video. But if I have the time, I try to post a 10 to 15 minute video so that you guys can take a long enough break from your PhD. As a grandmother of YouTube, I'm of course very slow to this trend of posting short video, but fear not, I figured out the technology of making vertical videos. So now, if you are new to this channel, I add this the video with the sneak peek of the video as well as the thumbnails, and there will be a link in the description box to direct you to that exact video. I hope this is going to help you browse the content on PhD Coffee Time a lot more efficiently and in an enjoyable, intuitive way. And of course, one minute video is much easier to share with your friends. So please don't hesitate to share this with anyone that may need this. If you think my tips is helping your PhD, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification so that Whenever this type of videos that's relevant to you comes up, you will be the first to know. Now back to Duolingo. The same for you if you have the discipline to repeat this process over and over every day. One to the power of 365 is one. Increment by 1%. 1 1.01 1 to the power of 365 is 37. So you can be 37 times stronger in this language by just increasing 1% of your effort consistently every day. The same for everything you do in life. Third tips about using Duolingo, don't use it just with your phone. Because I started learning French lesson in my unemployment. There were some really strict teacher who give us a lot of things to copy. That was the moment I just come to remembering it's really helpful when you're writing things down, which is straightforward. Why is it so hard to remember that writing things down is important, right? But to me, since I have been digitalizing everything in my PhD, I'd use OneNote, I've been using all of my digital platform to take scientific notes, I forget about writing. But it's like when we were back in three-year-old, five-year-old started to learn English. For a new language, the most effective way is to say out the word and write it on the paper and remember how it's spelled. Katos. Katos. Especially for French, spelling is not straightforward at all. I forgot if it's two E or one E. So one thing I did for Duolingo, I will hit the play button that is in green and I try to squint my eyes so that I don't see the sentence. So when it says a sentence, I will try to do a dictation. Il y a du chat dans le champ. And I will have to spell it low. Two cats, I have to have an S after C-H-A-T-S. I have Duolingo locked in. Utile. Oh, 
Joui c'est lundi. Je n'ai pas pas français. Chaque soir, je lis les journaux en français. Dimanche, je peux parler français. Et puis parler français dimanche. Quatorze. Quatorze. So I just misspelled fourteen in French. Q U A T O R Z E. Quatorze. Quatorze with that. Okay. Quatorze. So every day when I finish, it gives me a lingo. That was a cheat because it was an easy lesson. So usually I have one simple lesson and one hard lesson. Okay, so this is something I want to show. Is when I see a sentence that has a speaker like this, and I can listen. Mon frère habite seul parce qu'il est divorcé. I can write this. Mon. I can do a dictation. Frère, mon frère. Mon frère habite seul parce qu'il est divorcé. Habite seul. Mon frère habite seul parce qu'il est divorcé. Parce que il est divorcé. Il est divorcé. I forgot if it's two e or one e. Divorcé. So my answer for now is mon frère habite seul parce que il est divorcé. Ah, I always make this mistake parce que. Mon frère habite seul parce que il est divorcé. I always make this mistake. After this, I will enter my answer on the screen. My brother lives alone because he's divorced. So I finished the exercise and I have learned a few words. And I have highlighted the new words that I have to remember. Like since a few years ago, depuis des années, nous avons l'intention de passer. Uh, we intend to do something. So on Duolingo, you can also check your scorecard, which tells you what are the mistakes that you have made. I've tried to write down all the words. I think I have less mistake. Sometimes it's my English that's making a mistake. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this tip. And I do that every day in the morning, first thing first. I wish I knew to do this. I wasn't speaking as good French and making as many friends as I could have. So to sum up, I hope you are making the fullest use of resources like Duolingo or other platforms. Make sure you start early. Make sure you do it consistently. Go outside of the application and write down those words. Just because it's designed like a game, you don't need to treat it like it is a low bandwidth activity. Make it a high engagement quality work. My viewer, Didi, we actually had a Zoom call and she actually shared one more tip that I still haven't tried yet, is to have a tandem class, which means you are pairing up with another person whose mother tongue is French and your mother tongue is perhaps English. If that person wants to learn English and you want to learn French, then you can meet up every week. You can have like more conversational exchange by just practicing together. You can teach that person English, that person can teach you French. That's a good way in this pandemic to feel more connected to people. That's also a great way to actually use the language. Sometimes textbook language is different from day-to-day -day language. Merci pour votre attention. That comes to the end of today's video. If you know anybody who is living in a foreign country that doesn't speak English, Please share this video to that person. That is a way to share your support to that person's journey of studying a PhD. If you have any question about your PhD study, even trivial as learning a language, this is the platform to support all of this question because my goal is to unwrap all of the little things that nobody talks about in PhD. Even dicing an onion, I want to get to that. Stay tuned for the Dicing Onion video then. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time. Au revoir.